Well, today I've got a lovely garden to paint. The sun is up. Got some lovely colours and shapes here and colour. Got that garden table down there. Some outbuildings here and strong shadows, which are nice. And look at those. Look at those roses. I might do uh, a little close-up watercolour of some of those a bit later. But uh, yet to decide my composition. But I think I'm going to do several different ones. So let's get. Well, I've sketched out my rough design. Um, just very roughly and very loosely. Uh, I've got this big old house here, big building here, and a little barn area here, or a little studio actually, I think it is. And uh, uh, But mainly I've got to uh, block in the colours and uh, I want to make sure I get some really, some of the nice colours from the roses that I've got just in this position here and lots of ambers and uh, sort of reds and ochres and I've got the patio here you can see I've drawn a few lines here to try and give you perspective um, but anyway let's uh, let's crack on with it and see what we can make of this so I'm going to do it fairly loosely I want to try and keep keep uh, some recognizable shapes and things there so let's get a nice um, wash going uh, for the sky. So I'm going to use a little bit of cobalt here, cobalt blue. This one here, can you see that one? And I'm in, in the garden now. So you've got the challenges of plain air painting the wind and the light changes so you have to be fairly quick to crack on with it so let's have a little bit of ultramarine so I want to make a nice nice sky so let's go with that well, I've got on my brush there I'll bring it right down here into the. Hmm, I'm not sure about this paper. Don't know what I'm getting off here. Still, let's press on, see what we can make of it. I think those little flecks of something will hopefully come off. Oh, I've got somebody with the dreaded hedge trimmer making a bit of a racket. Sorry about that. So I'm going to see if I can, with a damp brush, try and lift some of our clouds out. Take a damp brush. If I can lift a little bit, big bank of cloud in the distance there. So let's lift that out. bit of shadow area as well so I'm going to put a little bit of 
raw sienna, a little bit of cadmium red, just to suggest a little bit of a shadowy area. to put some um, different washes of, of green in so I'm going to use some sap green viridian just a general wash some of these areas then I'm going to drop in different colors this is just our first wash. And uh, here we go. Um, different ones here. Some slightly yellower ones. Maybe different greens. Let's get a bit of hookers. Give me some variety. Sweep this in. General area. A light green. It's an olive tree there, I think. Or well, I'm not sure. No, some silvery textured leaves on it anyway. And a um, little bit of green here. And we put some grey in here. So I'm going to put a little bit of Payne's grey there to try and suggest our patio. Like that. And there's lots of pots on here which uh, I will um, put in some nice terracotta colours. Um, green here. Okay, let's leave that for a moment. Could be our first wash anyway. Um, quite know what's happened to this paper. It's poor quality I think. Let's get a smaller brush so I can start putting in some of these darker colours. Some of the uh, sort of nice purpley colour in there, like um, a bit like a copper birch, but it's, it's just actually, I think it's a little tiny young acer of some sort. So I'm going to mix a reddish colour with a bit of blue, a bit more cadmium to make it copier, copper, more copper-like, a little light red, um, and it's a little too, I think we need some more purple, so I'll put a bit of violet in it. Ah oh, yes, that's that's getting us a little nearer it. So let's fleck in a little bit of this. Dab it in. Little tiny brush here, number ten. Little tiny flat. Give me a little bit of shape. Suggesting it. Put some dark and under underneath on the underside where we are not getting very much light. Right, we'll leave that for the moment. 
Um, and some of the pots I've got in my view, uh, different colours. I've got one here, got a variety. So you have to be a bit selective. You can't put every every little feature in, but you select a few and ring the changes, that's important. Give some different colours. I'm letting this dry up a little bit before I put some uh, different ones in there. Little pots here and there. some black ones as well, usual garden variety. Like that, got a bit of shadow on ground them, like that. And here I've got the barbecue, all in its dark cover on it at the moment, black cover. So let's just go with that. And down here, the covers. So I'll just go with that for the moment. ochre with it to give me a slightly lighter clay pot here. Yes, that's a bit better. foliage here. I can use this colour and brush to pick out some of the colours on these leaves but I'll be changing it, changing it up in different greens and yellows in. Need to something in there. Some big one. Let's. Oh no, it's in an awkward position. I think we'll just lift that out. And use that to give us some texture. Now this one here. Let's go with a an ochre one. More ochre. -y. Well, 
Right. Um, so I can see one little galvanized thing here and another one here. Try and keep some of the lights of the aluminium. Um, um, can we put in a brown there? Let's um, get a nice colour for that. A little bit of umber. I think we can do that. Yes. in and the front of this little garden shed here rather lab garden shed actually it's got was used was made with some retrieved portholes from a salvage ship or a breaker's yard would you believe so I'll put those in in a minute but that's what the, uh, the wall, this face of it looks like anyway. There's beds of flowers in it as well. We'll put the uh, the colour in a little bit later. Well, I'm there. I can tap slightly different colours into that that acer there. Leave a few tree holes. I can see a really red, coppery plant just here. And suggest that. Right. Um, this, some teasels out here. Um, but uh, it's not quite the right colour. Let's just use a little bit of this on some of these leaves. the greens. Um, still a few more pots there. I can suggest some of these leaves as well. But uh, let's see if I can get those teasels in. I think I need to get a much yellower or lighter. So I think I'll have some raw sienna here to suggest these teasels like that. Yes, I think they were something like this. We can put some of the stems in. 
later as we go. We'll we'll vary them as we go. Well, some down here as well. Let's get some of them. Put some um, nice roses in to see if we can uh, give that placement. We put the colour, we put the flowers in, and then we can build up the uh, the foliage later. So little clumps of roses here. Quite a lump of them there, and uh, can vary the colour. Uh, I've got some reds out here. Don't know what half of these flowers are, but um, just behind these, we've got a, a nice um, plant with sort of some lovely foliage, like a rabino or something, I'm not sure. But uh, I'm going to put that in anyway. Um, let's yellow up some of the... the leaves around it. And we'll put a bit of green with it as well. Uh, we can go a bit stronger than that. Got some viridian here. I'm going to try and suggest with the leaves. Yes, it's helping a little bit. Change our greens up a little bit. Let's put get a bit of hooker's green mixed with all these colours and produce something nice for us. And um, here I've got some nice architectural leaves coming out like this. So we'll go with that. Let's see if I can give some different colours here as well and uh, to the left by this window actually I've got some little tree some nice leaves rustling in the wind. I can hear them now. So I'll just try and get some of the shape. And greens down here. Like that. And also out here got a Quite a quite a green shrub there. A little bit spiking out like this. Put some reds as with it in parts we can suggest some of the sort of leaves and branches try and join up these massive leaves um, 
try and get something in here. Um, greens, different greens. Let's get um, some viridian and some sap. Green, let's see if we can get something uh, fairly vibrant. Oh, that's a little bit too green for me. Oh, here comes my assistant with a nice cup of tea, which everybody needs a nice cup of tea. Lovely, thank you. Um, right, now what was I doing here? So I'm using the side of the brush here to help me create some texture, some form. Uh, but I've got to get this this building in. That's the roof line goes along there. We've got another edge of a building coming here. So we'll do all that in a minute. But let's get this uh, roof in. Uh, there's a top line there. Come here. So let's get some umber and some Burnt Sienna. Let's see what we can. It's uh, a mixture of tiles, different colours. So I'm going to mix some burnt sienna, some burnt umber, so we can. Yes, I think we can do that. Um, I think I can raise this up quite a bit. I think I've got it too low. Let's go with that. Put our line in there. That'll do it. Stiff. That's better. Doesn't matter if we leave a few lights, highlights coming through from the paper. That's uh Quite a useful thing to do with watercolour actually. Adds a little bit of light to your, to your picture. Use the whites of the paper. But I'll put more texture in there. Um, I'm still wondering if I should raise that roof line a little bit more. Make it darker as well. Yes, I think we can do that. Right. Okay. Let's, let's leave that now. Um, now, let's... I think I need to add a little bit more to this roof of this garden shed here. Make it stand out from the all the greens behind. 
I'll put the windows in, of course, those portholes I was telling you about. There's a hint at the door there. Pathway coming off here. There's more greens. Right, let's go with that. Um, now at this point uh, here, there's this silvery, bluey textured foliage, light hint of silver. In. So I've got to try and do that. Yes, that's something like it. Just dab in this. Cerulean in it to keep it light, with cerulean blue. It's a mass of this. But I can leave that the first wash I put on. As you can see that I could use that to give me some highlights. Suggest so I'll feather in. I want a soft edge here. This little bits of branches coming out like this. So let's, let's block it in anyway. I'm trying to do a build it up in layers. Your dark elements light elements you need the darks to offset your your lights you've got to be careful not to make it look muddy which is always the danger and under any bit of foliage really if the light's not getting there it's overhanging all the you've got to I'm a lot darker here. Right, do that. Coming down to another flower breads here. Again, different greens. I've got to try and put some individual flowers in in a minute. See if we can brighten up the scene somewhat. Some of these. dry paint here. Oops there. Um, right now let's so I want to put in the line of this house there, or this studio. Um, yes, I've got a better brush here now. Which one can, 
give me a little bit more control. It's a number four, number four round aqua, aquiline, data round, a really nice brushes, synthetic brush. So it'll do the job for me right now, but let's get that line down here. Is the studio there? I've got a drain pipe delineating there. Can use a bit more to black to do this barbecue area as well. Dark there. Um, and I can touch in the window shapes a little bit. There's a little bit of brickwork along there. Um, need to get it darker in here. And we'll do that. Um, let's get a nice uh, Naples yellow colour, which this building is actually. It's got some lovely colours in, and on that edge, I'll put some texture to represent some decorative brick brickwork. We needn't bother with that for the moment. Let's just block in some colour there and um, this is quite light because the sun is coming left to right so I'm going to step that up actually with a bit of cadmium yellow on top of my oh god contaminated brush there um, that's a bit better a bit, a bit brighter cadmium yellow Remember that this is going to be going to dry an awful lot lighter. So I need to put in a shade darker. So I'm going to go for some ochre there. Um, tone it down with a, a little bit of brown. shadow line on there and this is also in the shadow so we can use the wet brush to, to take a little bit of that dark line out the gutter line there in pots there coming into our view. But what I'm going to do now is just try and suggest some brickwork which there was along here on this edge here. In fact it goes on to the other side there as well. Let's just go with that see what we can do. along there as well. Right, okay. Um, now let's think. Um, so garden. 
paraphernalia around. Um, um, Some of the darks in there, sort of olivey. Some flecks give it a little bit more texture to that tree. I can. Some of it is. I need to squint my eyes and I can see the, the main bow under there. Uh, that will help to establish it a little bit, I think. Yes, it comes down to this bed here, but all this is much, much darker. Under there, bows. I've got to put in some of these stalks as well. Need a, some sort of suggestion here, likely done. Let's get some colours in these lighter areas where I've got yes, hell. I need to get some pinks as well. Got some orangey colours as well. Some plants here. I've got some blues as well I can put in. But yes, there's a lot of roses here. But let's put a bit of Chinese white with our uh, red to suggest something. more interesting is coming out here into these bits as well. Let's get some darker colours in places. Um, yes, I need to Three. Got to ground that a little bit better. That's better. And let's get a um, bit of shadow under there. A bit more texture in that roof. Um, now this, let's get a little purpley shadowy colour to give us on the face of that building. It's a little bit more blue with some crimson alizarin. It'll give me a bit of a shadow on that face there. Um, I've just noticed that Mr. Door. A hint at the door there. And on this face here, this is uh, a brick building. So let's slightly dab in here. We can probably put some brick effect in 
later. got tape along the edge of the picture there so when I take that off it will frame it up so we should have a nice edge along here which will emphasize some of it I think um, I need to give a slight hint of color to this face of this building here it's just a bit too white, so let's just drop a little bit of sienna in. I'll put the windows in in a minute too, that will make it come alive, I think. Um, I need to put some different colours. Um, let's get some what can I say? I can see some purpley reds to do that. Let's get a little bit of white into that. A little Chinese white into my purple there. Yes, maybe we can do that. No, that didn't come out very clean, did it? Let's go to the purple again. Get some fresh violet. Yeah, I think we can do that. In fact, here, just in my view, um, I can see purple, but I'm going to have to lighten it up a little bit. Yes, that's, that helps. Got some here. One of these, these tubs, different colors. Let's give a different red. Let's go for some um, crimson alizarin. So now we can change our our reds. vivid big big leaves let's uh, see if we can yes we can make it a bit stronger than that so I'll put a bit of hookers with the nice sap green yes Let's, uh, I need to darken up the green to give the, the stalks a bit more readable. So, yes, that's a little better. Let's put a bit of blue with it. Yes, I've got that sort of bluey, viridian sort of colour that you get with roses. Can you kind of suggest that them if you can? Okay, we've got these over here.
So I'm putting a darker green against that lighter green that I put in earlier there. So we'll help it read a little bit. And I can put some darker greens there. Uh, so you want to put darks against the light. There's a darker green against this lighter green. Uh, hopefully that will benefit both shapes. Stepping back to see how I can need to put something in this space here. Something that adds some interest anyway. So let's get some darker stalks here. Maybe we can put some roses on them. Bring some changes. These were some earth colors in here but I'm looking down at the earth now I can see dark areas I can see lots of lovely flowers as well heaven knows what they are I was more of a gardener I could tell you all I know is they are pretty attractive let's uh, See if I can suggest them anyway with some nice greens. Um, oh, here I've got a fern. So, how? Yes, it's got one of the, I think it's a New Zealand fern, is it? These. Is there? That's the soil around here, bottom of this tub. Comes out behind. That's it. And then we've got to make sure we can read it correctly. Let's put some colour there. So give it some volume, some shape. There's a dark shadow under there. So 
Okay, let's get a little darker, earthy colour here, and also here, all of these. chimneys in here actually so I'll we'll have to sort that out at some point um, I think I can do these a little darker there yes notice them there dark frames in a frame there Definitely there. Thought it was a good idea to come out and paint today. The uh, autumn is first day of the autumn it started today, so uh, I've got a. Won't be coming out in the winter, although there are plain air people who do that. Put on their heavy clothes and get out there. Certainly, people in Canada. And the USA, I follow one guy who paints quite regularly in the Pacific Northwest. He's all wrapped up with thermal gloves and woolly boots, fur boots. I don't know how he does it. Paints in oils. But that's what you do. That's what you do. He enjoys it. We can observe it from the warmth of our homes. Um, now we've got the hint of these uh, these flags coming in, haven't we? They help give us some sort of linear perspective as they disappear there. Uh, this is just being crudely laid. Well, they're flags actually, they're not just as flags are, but uh, randomly shaped, small ones, bigger ones, little there, here. So 
I can do that. Right, well, I could do a lot to get real accuracy. Um, which I might do, but I don't know when I'll have enough time while I'm filming to do that. Um, of course, you've got to be careful not to overwork. But let me just see if I can... There are a couple of plants I can see on this one, which is orange, would you believe? So I can't miss that opportunity. It's a good old orange slab there. A little there. Yes, I've got to do that. And I can make use of that on this um, plant here. Um, let's get a little different red as well. Um, Let's go for, well I've got three or more different reds on my palette. Um, I know crimson lizard and cadmium, but I've got others as well, so let's, uh, let's put a few here and there. These lovely different shapes of these. These uh, leaves. So, so I can make all sorts of shapes. And to sort of call a halt. I'm nearly out of battery anyway. So if you like what I do, please push the uh, like button and push the subscribe tab there and then you'll be notified when I put up some more, which is always encouraging actually if, uh, if you uh, comment as well. You tell me if you like it and what sort of painting you would prefer. Uh, we like village scenes or architecture or maybe you like some coastal scenes. Everybody likes to be by the seaside, don't they? But, um, there we are. This just a just a few hints anyway, just for fun. The dying dregs of summer. Um, well, there we are. Thanks for watching, anyway. Well, there's the finished article with the tape taken off. So I'm reasonably happy with it, but I probably will spend a little bit of time um, tightening up and putting some highlights in. So that's my uh, final uh, little titivation I will do to it, I think. <laughs>